Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the classical versus Keynesian view of aggregate supply. In this video we're going to examine the difference between the Keynesian and the classical view of the macroeconomy when it comes to the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. So the first thing that we're going to look at here is the difference between the classical view here on the left hand side in terms of supply. So the classical view would be that the short run aggregate supply curve is vertical in nature, which means that there's absolutely no relationship between the price level in the economy and the output or GDP level. So GDP is independent of price, monetary neutrality. In the Keynesian view, what we will say is that the short run aggregate supply curve is a horizontal line as opposed to vertical. And what this means is that there is infinite capacity in the economy. So once there's extra demand in this economy, it means that there can be an increase in the output and supply level without any increase in prices. Okay. So what we will do here is we can draw in a aggregate demand curve for both the classical view and for the Keynesian view. So here we have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve giving us an equilibrium point, point A, where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. And at that level we have the price level and we have the GDP level in the economy as well. Now, if we replicate that on the right hand side, we will have our aggregate demand curve downward sloping. We will note it as aggregate demand. And again, we'll note in the equilibrium point in the short run, we'll show that at point A, we have a price level in the economy P1, and we have an equilibrium GDP level, GDP1. Okay, the interesting thing is what happens when there's a change in the economy. So let's say there's a positive shock to the aggregate demand curve. So maybe interest rates have dropped and this means that people, consumers and firms, investors will invest more. And this means that the aggregate demand curve will shift rightwards. So we'll shift it across to the right here. We will call that AD1 represent a new demand we can show that shifting to the right but importantly we draw in a new equilibrium point and a new equilibrium point point b shows you that in under classical conditions the price level increases to p2 so we have an increase in prices however at point b we have the exact same real output level so output doesn't change However, there is an increase in prices. This extra demand is causing inflation in this economy. So extra demand such as expansionary monetary policy causes inflation in the economy, no impact on real GDP. Let's try the exact same stimulus to the economy from let's say our monetary policy again, where interest rates are dropped so aggregate demand in this case again shifts right the exact same effect on aggregate demand so both schools of thought would see the exact same uh, impact on aggregate demand there's no difference there however in the keynesian case where we have spare capacity in the economy what we have is the price level stays exactly the same so p1 here however the GDP level, as you see, shifts or increases to the right. So GDP2 shows a rightward shift, which is an increase in GDP away from the origin. So in this case, a stimulus policy coming from either monetary or fiscal policy that shifts aggregate demand to the right causes prices to stay at the same level in the short run, but causes an increase in GDP in the short run. So the difference here is that one would advocate policy. The difference here is that one would uh, advocate discretionary policy. So changing uh, 
either fiscal and maybe monetary policy, but mainly fiscal in the Keynesian case. However, the classical view would advocate more supply side measures. So rather than trying to expand the economy through demand, what the supply side would advocate would be that you try and shift the long run growth in the economy. So what we would have in this case here is you would shift the short run aggregate supply curve, maybe through education policies or maybe through investment in infrastructure, uh, making the economy more competitive with less wage rigidity. And you would shift the short run and long run aggregate supply rightwards. And what this would do is at the initial aggregate demand level at AD, it will cause the economy to increase in terms of output. So there would be instead supply side measures advocated by the classical view. Okay, so what we can do is we can combine both of these uh, schools of thought and the combined view over here would be that the short run aggregate supply curve initially starts as quite flat where there is spare capacity in the economy but as that spare capacity is used up as we reach the uh, the end point of our natural resources or our labor or our capital well then we can reach almost a vertical point up here so in this case the short run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping coming to almost a vertical point at the end of it where capacity is reached and our aggregate demand curve looks exactly the same as we had before so downward sloping aggregate demand and what this would mean is if we shift the aggregate demand curve to the right based on maybe expansionary policy we do get an impact on the real variable in the short run so if we start off at the initial level a we can move across gives us our starting price and our starting output level gdp1 the increase in, in aggregate demand has caused the price level to increase somewhat but not as much as the pure classical view with the vertical supply curve and it has increased gdp somewhat as well not as much as in the keynesian viewpoint but there is capacity in this economy for GDP and prices to increase. And what we would see is if aggregate demand was increased yet further over to this point here, we would see that eventually it has no impact on real variables. As we move over here, the aggregate demand curve shifting right to AD two and ad three what it would cause really is inflation in the economy as we reach capacity and the inflation rate would increase but it would have very little to no impact on the gdp of the economy so the combined view is the more traditional view of an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve i hope you call back to cultnomics soon bye for now